Hello you wild and deadlies, how are you? Welcome to the UK spring. Isn't it beautiful? I mean, look at all that colour. Woo! Magnificent, huh? Anyway, at one time, there were eight species of oil beetle in the UK. Now there's only five. Sadly, this is due to ever increasing loss of wildflower meadows, desperately relied upon by our solitary bees, with whom oil beetles' lives are very tightly intertwined. The five we have left are the violet oil beetle, the black oil beetle, the rugged oil beetle, Mediterranean oil beetle, and the short necked oil beetle, the latter of which was previously considered extinct having last been seen in 1948. However, it was rediscovered in Devon in 2006 and in 2010. It was also rediscovered in one of the Isles of the Hebrides. Apparently it's been seen in Dorset, but well, we'll just have to wait and see what the oil beetle experts have to say about that. Uh, their name comes from the beautiful oily shine that they possess in the sun and their defensive chemical secretions that look like beadlets of oil. Now in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you violet oil beetles because well, they're the ones that I've got in my garden, um, but they're very similar to black oil beetles, the violets, but uh, they are distinguishable by the shapes of their thoraxes, Whoop. which are, uh, on black oil beetles are a bit more square, but with the violet oil beetles, there's a little curved section between where the thorax and the abdomen join. Now this is the time of year when they are seen as adults, having spent the winter in the consumed lodgings of last year's solitary bees which they parasitized and my garden is full of them. Only the other day I, I collected 25 before mowing the lawn. I don't want to squidge rare oil beetles, well, any beetle actually. Now oil beetles are in a, a much larger family known as blister beetles which is due to their inbuilt chemical defense which is cantharidin enhanced hemolymph which bug blood with toxin really. Cantharidin is highly toxic and irritant and in high enough levels is quite dangerous. Now in the British species there's very little to worry about. Uh, if you've got tough unbroken adult skin you're not likely to get any reactions but if you have soft skin areas or if you've got uh, children playing around with them they may get a blister so um, you know be careful with them. The risk areas are like your eyes and your nose and your mouth so don't go licking them okay. No, I haven't tried that. <clears throat> now, when feeling threatened, their first course of action is to force it out through their knee joints, much like the way, you know, like ladybirds do when you pick them up. And any animal trying to eat one will be rewarded with a very painful, burning, stinging sensation in the mouth and blisters, which are gonna remain for several days to remind them of the error of their ways. Ow! With the ever-present danger of being eaten all around for most invertebrates, they are very wise to employ such powerful levels of protection because not even ever-hungry Mr. Toad is interested. Maybe he's tried one in the past. Maybe. Who knows? In this country, uh, they are not really a problem, but worldwide there are around about seven and a half thousand species of oil beetle, ranging from non-impactful to agricultural pests. In the States, there are hundreds of species of oil beetle. Some arguably are beneficial, uh, as their larvae prey upon the eggs of pest grasshopper species but there are adults of others that are extremely hazardous, especially to cattle and horses. They can be quite prevalent in the alfalfa fields where the herbivorous adults grow and gorge themselves on the readily available leaves. That's harmless enough up until harvesting time. The beetles get squished, crushed and dried out in the process and their cantharidin rich bodies are slow to lose their toxicity. In fact, it can remain for a few months after death, proving fatal to all animals that eat enough of them. One beetle on its own won't cause any problems, not to a horse, but just 123 striped blister beetles is enough to do the job. They cause blisters in the mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, 
And once enough toxin has made it into the, the bloodstream and the liver, time will run up very quickly for the animals affected and veterinary intervention is critical to the survival of said animals. It's a really, really horrible, painful way to go. Not all oil beetles are as potent as we've already discussed, certainly not our British counterparts, yet for all its inherent dangers, cantharidin is useful to us. It is one of the active ingredients in one of the more potent last line of defense uh, wart treatments. And it's also in low doses in something called Spanish fly. That's made up from ground oil beetles. You're eating beetles. Ugh. Gross. <laughs> the males are easy to distinguish from the females with their kinked antennae, but uh, in large enough numbers, uh, confusion can break out. Uh, with variable sizes between them, um, sometimes males can be the size of small females and some of the smaller females can be the size of large males. Uh, confused tussles will break out between them. It's not always wise to take your eye off the prize, boys. Oh, there she goes. Better luck next time, eh? <laughs> Their emergence is perfectly timed to coincide with solitary digging bees and lawn bees and masonry bees and, and leaf roller bees. And right now these bees are setting to creating their own pollen reserves, laying eggs, etc. whilst all the oil beetles are busy copulating and laying themselves. Each female beetle will dig a burrow and lay well over a thousand eggs which will hatch out in two to three weeks time depending on, um, on the warmth and springtime warmth into these last like little creatures called triungulins. Triungulins, three claws on the end of each foot, that's why they're triungulins. They climb up plants, stems, flowers, gather in large masses and they can release pheromones that mimic the smell of um, receptive female bees which attracts the male bees. <laughs> nice hustle guys. <laughs> he then pairs up with a real female bee and then the triangulins that he's carrying will jump ship and uh, land on her and she then carries them back to her nest where um, they start consuming all of the stalls that she's built up and her eggs. <laughs> Whoops, never mind. Sometimes the triangulins get lucky and latch onto a female straight away and they, they get a direct line back to her nest. Poor old, <laughs> poor old bees, they're getting a hard time, aren't they? Now, oil beetles go through a process that is known as hypermetamorphosis. It's a, it's a different kind of metamorphosis as opposed to the normal metamorphosis that we're all used to with uh, egg, larva, chrysalis, imago. Uh, oil beetles have the egg, then they have the triangulin, and then they have a few more instars of uh, a beetle grub, which you're more familiar with if you keep beetles as pets, you know, like the flower beetles, etc. And then the, the final molt is into a beetle pupa, which remains in the now gobbled up uh, bee nest over winter, and then it hatches out mid-March, ready to start all over again. The triangulins even make it back to honeybee hives, but they don't last there as the, the fastidious worker bees really are on the ball. They, they get rid of them pretty quickly. This may all sound like bad news for the bees, but the triangulin season in the spring only lasts for a few weeks. Whereas the solitary bees can live for a number of months, some of them most of the summer, and they will produce and a good number of nests in different locations. So not all of her offspring will be completely lost. But the thing is, the poor bees don't get a break because the, the oil beetles, the, the different species hatch out at different times of the year. So there's another load that come out later on in the summer. So they get two rounds of it. Now, as we know, there are only five species left in the UK. Our oil beetles are still under threat uh, used most it's, it's the it's the pesticides neonicotinoids you know scientists have done research on this stuff it is bad for bees and this results in ever decreasing wild populations which is why it's important that if any of you spot oil beetles when you're out on your stroll and you're out on your walk if you spot any oil beetles try and take a photo of them with your with your mobile phones if it's got a good camera and upload your findings to Bug Life. 
Okay, they've got a great website where you can log in and you can tell them exactly where you found your beetles. So they've got a little Google Maps plug-in thing which you drag and drop the pin. There you go. And you can be part of actual real life science. That'd be cool, yeah? Do it. Talking about life science, the Bugfest Bio Blitz, the Backyard Bio Blitz. I've been talking about it on Facebook, etc. Let's get you out there in the gardens with your kids. Let's do something. Let's have some fun. What I want you to do is go out, take photos of anything you can get hold of. If you haven't got a garden, well, that's not the end of the world because, um, you know, if you go on a walk in town, you're still going to spot wildlife. Wildlife is everywhere, especially now after a lockdown. I mean, it's kangaroos running around in cities in Australia. I mean, that's so cool, right? The same applies here. And even without a lockdown, last year, for instance, I was visiting one of the schools in Bristol, um, Barton Academy. I actually went to that school when I was a kid. It was really nice going back there. Um, I went out for a walk during my break and lo and behold, I spot a hedge which is full of caterpillars. Yeah, covered in web. Um, they were the um, ermine moth caterpillars. You'll see them later on, <laughs> hopefully when the restrictions are lifted in the hedges. Oh, there's so much I'd love to film right now, but I can't because of this lockdown. But hey ho, can't have it all, can we? It's the way it is. But the other thing that I'm doing is the Friday Live, okay? Friday Q&A with Nick. Log into the Facebook page, okay? Bugfest UK. Facebook forward slash Bugfest UK. And you log in there for 11 o'clock. I will be there and I will answer any questions you want to throw at me about wildlife and natural history. If you have found any creepy crawlies or any animals that you would like to have identified and you just can't seem to find what it is anywhere, um, send us a message through the Facebook page with a picture and do it by Thursday, sort of mid-afternoon, mid so that I'll have time to look through and see what you've got and identify it for you. And we can talk about that there and then as well. That'd be nice. Any of you fancy having a go at making some of your own videos? Go for it. So easy. There's lots of free open source software out there. Anyone can do it. I mean, look at, I've just, this is all done on a mobile phone <laughs> and a, a £4.50 selfie stick that doesn't even have Bluetooth on it. I mean, I can do it. You can do it. Yeah. So let's have some fun. Let's not let this lockdown get us down. Let's just go. Yeah, whatever. We can do it not going to be forever guys so that's about it from me for this week I will be back next week with something new so until then take care of yourselves my friends be safe and have a good week <laughs>